Hi, boys and girls. Today we're reading Epi the Elephant, who was allergic to peanuts. And it's written by Livingstone Krauss and illustrated by Steve Brown. And remember, we've talked about the word illustrated. That means the artwork, the pictures. And then there's the story. That means it's written by. Okay, here we go. Look at this colorful book. Oh, wow. Epi the Elephant, which is allergic to peanuts. Here we go. Our story begins on the first day of school with one eager new student and one simple rule. No peanuts, said Epi. She knew it by heart, and she knew that to break it wouldn't be very smart. One whiff of peanut, and her nostrils would twitch. Her eyes fill with water, and her ears start to itch. <laughs> to make matters worse, her trunk would balloon, and the chances of that filled poor Epi with gloom. Of course, there were things beyond getting sick, like other kids laughing or thinking, it's a trick. Or perhaps they'd be able to see at first glance that Epi was different, or not give her a chance. So, while her teacher had been told and the school nurse alerted, Epi still feared a crisis could not be averted. Thank goodness her father saw something was wrong. He knelt close and whispered, You're brave and you're strong. Hugging her tight, he said, You make me so proud. He kissed Epi's forehead, then left with the crowd. Squaring her shoulders, Epi held her head high and bravely stepped forward because big girls don't cry. All that she needed was one friendly face. Then maybe, just maybe, things would fall into place. Setting her course with no time to dally, she looked for a seat. That's when she saw Allie. Oh no, panicked Epi, the moment of truth. But Allie just grinned, showing each snaggled truth. I found you a seat. It's right here next to mine. He sounded so hopeful that she could not decline. Maybe Allie didn't notice all the eyes turning to stare. But one thing was for certain. Epi made her first friend right there. And there they are sitting together. I bet Allie is short for alligator. What do you think? And there's Epi. Allie even asked her to for help stacking blocks. They built quite a city filled with towers and docks. And when an alphabet puzzle gave them cause to worry, Pearl stepped in to help and it was solved in a hurry. This is Pearl, the squirrel. Soon they were inseparable. Oh, that's a big word, inseparable. Epi, Alec, and Pearl. The rest of that morning passed by in a whirl because they were together all the time, inseparable. Can't be separated. Come lunchtime, the trio, that means three, were bound both fast and true. They stuck to one another as if bonded with glue. But just as the playmates found a great spot to eat, Epi was pointed to a lone distant seat. Over there. What's over there? Oh my goodness. The teacher told Allie, 
You have PB and J. That's trouble for Eppy. She must stay far away. And Pearl's bag of peanuts only makes matters worse. One touch could send Eppy right straight to the nurse. Allie started, stared at Eppy, and Pearl did the same. Eppy started stammering, just desperate to explain. She said, I, I, I'm allergic, and peanuts make me ill. And with that, her perfect day took a turn downhill. An elephant allergic to peanuts? This must be a prank. Allie busted out laughing, and Eppie's heart sank. Pearl didn't say a word. She sat there looking scared. While this was Eppie's gravest fear, she wasn't quite prepared. Miserable, she wandered off to eat her lunch alone and listened to her buddies from the distant nut-free zone. Nut-free zone. Even after lunch had finished, things weren't quite the same. Eppie felt all on her own, her allergy to blame. She couldn't face her playmates. She could barely even speak. The fact that they knew her secret left her feeling small and weak. When school was finally over, she didn't say goodbye. She sidled home, bereft, alone, and tried hard not to cry. All throughout that evening, her thoughts were filled with dread. They followed her through dinner and her bath time straight to bed. She started the next school day still feeling lost and alone. How would she make it through the day with no friends to call her own? So Eppy didn't look for Allie when she arrived in class. She deftly dodged both him and Pearl, and wished the day would pass. She hid from them at recess, but peeked as they played ball, and wondered if her former friends missed her much at all. As the time for lunch grew nearer, she began to fear the worst. All alone, again at lunchtime, Eppy thought her heart would burst. She imagined Pearl and Allie sharing loads of lunchtime fun while she sat in the nut-free zone alone and having none. No fun. But when she reached her table, the sight that met her eye made tears of happiness well up. Well, yes, big girls sometimes cry. Nut-free zone. Because there... Side by side, their smiles of joy, full-blown, sat Eppie's two best buddies in the distant nut-free zone. Our parents made us tuna, said Pearl with a grin. And sorry for the laughing, added Allie. It won't happen again. As Eppie stood between them, they explained how she'd been missed. They swore they'd make it up to her and why she shouldn't resist. And we can eat our lunch each day beside this nut-free sign. Allie and Pearl looked so hopeful that Eppie could not decline. Oh, wow, what a wonderful story. All the, That's really, really friends, isn't it? I love this story. It's a beautiful book. It's bright and shiny, and I just love it. So if you'd like to buy this book, you can look at my information and click where you're supposed to click and find it. It would make a good gift for a lot of kids. Thanks for reading with me, boys and girls. Until we read together again next time, bye-bye. <laughs>